The simplest possible pressure transducer would look something like this. A box with an inlet on top and bottom to allow us to expose the two sides to different pressures. In the middle we'll have a diaphragm here that's got some mass and depending on the pressure difference between this side and that side this diaphragm will move. So if P1 is greater than P2 it'll push downwards. If P2 is greater than P1 it'll push upwards. And the force that it pushes with will depend on the surface area of that diaphragm. Now there's some kind of flexible material over here that's keeping these two areas of the, the box separate and it's springy to allow that mass to move up and down. So we can imagine that it, there's some spring constant associated with that elastic motion there so that the further we move it the stronger the force is to try to pull it or push it back to where it was. So this springy part, if it if the pressure pushes it down, the spring will push back up. If the pressure pushes it up, the spring will tend to pull it back down. And if this is in equilibrium, it'll be fairly simple to figure out what's going on. We'll just have a balance of that spring force against these two pressure forces. And eventually that mass will come to equilibrium at either a higher location or a lower location. And that difference in location will tell us what the difference in pressures will be. So, from that force balance, our difference in pressures, and we'll call that P2 minus P1. So P2 minus P1 uh, pushes upwards, positively upwards on this area. And that P2 minus P1 times the area would be the upward force and the spring force it'll exert a downward force depending on how much y has gone up from the initial starting point of y equal to zero. So the force going downwards will be k times y the higher up it is the more the spring force pulls down and if we divide that by the area then we'll get the pressure. So that's if we're in equilibrium. We're much more interested in knowing the dynamics of this pressure transducer. How quickly is it going to get to this equilibrium state? And to do that, we'll have to look at that force balance and the acceleration of this mass. So we've got our usual F equals MA. We can always start there. Or if we turn that around the other way, we'll have A equal to F divided by M. Now that acceleration, that's the derivative of the vertical velocity with time. Or we can write that in the dot format that we sometimes use. That's V dot. That means it's the time derivative, the first time derivative of the velocity, or that's the second time derivative of the position. So we can write y double dot as being equal to, well there's the force going upwards on the diaphragm due to the pressure, that's P2 minus P1 times the area and we want the force divided by the mass so divided by the mass. That's the force that's acting upwards due to the pressure. Now there's also going to be some other forces acting due to the springy thing here. If it's already been displaced upwards then there's going to be a spring force times y acting in a downwards direction so negative and we have to divide that by m because of the f over m there. And then we don't have a device in here to show it, but there's always friction. If there's motion, there's going to be some friction that tends to oppose that motion. So there's going to be a force against the direction of motion. So there'll be some damping force 
C times the vertical velocity V, and it'll have a negative sign on it because friction goes in the opposite direction of the motion. And again, that one's got to be divided by M because we're looking at forces divided by mass. So if we rearrange that, we can get that the second derivative of, velo of position plus C over M, something to do with the damping, times the first derivative of position plus K over M times the position must be equal to whatever the forcing function is that's driving this thing. And what's driving it is a difference between the pressures, P2 minus P1 times the area divided by the mass. So if we could just solve this second order ordinary differential equation, then we could find out how the system is moving with time. Now if it's a second order ordinary differential equation, we're also going to need to know something about our starting conditions. So it's an initial value problem. So to solve this, we're going to have to be able to specify y as a function of t eventually, but to start off with, we'll have to be able to specify what y0 is equal to. So where is the pressure transducer's diaphragm initially? And we'll also have to be able to specify what the velocity at time zero is for the pressure transducer's diaphragm. And the easiest way to get to those? Well, we can take that from our equilibrium. The position will be whatever puts it in equilibrium with the pressure that was previously applied and the velocity will be zero because it's in equilibrium. So we can take this really simple model for a pressure transducer and look at how it will perform if we apply changing pressures on here. How quickly will it catch up with the applied pressure? How quickly will it measure what's really going on in our system?